but human beings were given a special ability to produce language. We're more capable, we're more sophisticated in how we use words and how we can communicate ideas and advance ideas. And the power of words, actually, I would argue, there's nothing more powerful that human beings are capable of than words. As a matter of fact, there's nothing more powerful. And the most, power, the most evident indication of that is that Allah Azza wa Himself decided to guide humanity through words. At the end of the day, the Qur'an essentially is Kalamullah, as he describes it himself in Surah At-Tawbah. It is the speech of Allah, it is words. And so, human beings, this, this great gift that Allah taught us, when he said, Allam al-Qur'an in Surah Rahman, they said, Allamahu al-Bayan, before that. Allam al-Qur'an, khalaq al-insan, Allamahu al-Bayan. He taught the human being the ability to speak. So our words are actually a very powerful gift that Allah gave us. And using, when we open our mouth and say something, we have to appreciate that this gift was not given to other creation the way it was given to us. And this is the gift because of which we are able to communicate with Allah and Allah communicates with us through this gift. That revelation would mean nothing if we didn't have the power of language. So when you have been given, and I have been given a very expensive, I would even argue a priceless gift, then the way we use it has to be exquisite. I mean, we have to be extra careful about how we use this gift because we value it. On a side note, I just want to say something that's not related to this khutbah, and that is that all languages, English, Arabic, French, German, Punjabi, Bengali, you, you name it, whatever, whatever language, Bahasa, whatever language you speak, all of them are children of the language taught to Adam alayhi salam. All of them. And all languages, Adam alayhi salam did not know language on his own, it was revealed to him. That was revealed to him. You know what that means? That all languages are a revealed gift of Allah. All of them. So making fun of somebody's language, and making fun of how somebody speaks, or making some fun of, you know, fun of cultures because they have different languages than us, is actually making fun of something Allah Himself revealed. It's sacred. You know, some people have in their head that Arabic is sacred, but you know, Punjabi. But you know what? All languages. Allah says, Allamahu al bayan. Allah, the, the same one who tell, said He taught the Quran, is the same one who said He taught speech. Same verb is used. Allah is the teacher of the Quran. Allah is the teacher of all speech. All speech. So get this concept out of your head. There's such a thing as the language of the kuffar, or the language of the non-Muslims, or the language of jahil. No, 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 no. All languages from Allah. And we have to have respect for all languages. And that's, a, that's a side note that I wanted to bring up. But regardless, now we, we come to the idea of al-qawl as sadid And I wanted to go through this, this loaded term, the word sadda in Arabic. Uh, for, as, as far as a material term is concerned, the first implication of it is ighlaqul khalal. It means to fill in a gap or a crack. When something like, you know, old walls, in, back in the day, now we have sheet rock, so in America at least it doesn't show as much, but when you have stone walls or concrete walls over time, some, there's some holes, and you have to fill them and patch them up. That patch is actually a sad in Arabic, or sadad in Arabic, to, to fill up a gap. Now what does that mean for speech? What the, the first implication of that is sometimes when somebody speaks to you, they cause damage, just like the damage on a wall. Right? Somebody says something hurtful to you. Somebody says something ignorant. Somebody, sometimes people say something ignorant about you, or they say something ignorant about what they don't know, or they speak as though they know, but they don't really know. And some of the most interesting is when people speak on behalf of Allah's deen, and say, you know what, that's haram. Where did you, where did you learn that's haram? Where did you, oh, you know what, this one makes things up about Islam. W makes what up? You, do you have the knowledge to say that before you make a claim about someone? Do you have the knowledge to say something is halal or haram before we open, your, we open our mouth? Now when you hear an ignorance like that, our first impulse is to put people in their place and to just shut them down. But you know, if you respond to ignorance with anger, or you respond to ignorance by, you know, a, a, a reaction, an, you know, an, an upset reaction, or you, you know, what we call put someone in their place, right? That's ignorant, you have no knowledge, what are you talking about? This is, you know, you're ridiculous, etc. When you have these kinds of responses, well, when you offend someone, because you're offended, when you offend someone back, do you think they're going to just hear that and say, oh, I didn't realize I was being ignorant, thank you for humbling me, now I'm just going to sit down and be quiet. That's not what's going to happen. They hear you respond, in an aggressive fashion, and what happens? They say, you know what, I'm going to take the next step, and now I'm going to become even more aggressive. I'm going to take, because you know, pride kicks in. Pride kicks in, you just attacked me. You just criticized me. And the human nature is to not accept criticism. It's to actually defend yourself. Whether it's physically defend yourself, but even verbally defend yourself. Then right or wrong 
exits from the conversation. All you want to do now is put someone else in their place. So now they say something even more obscene and more offensive. Now as you hear that, you get more upset and the crack gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But if we understand that we have to have the taqwa of Allah, the cautious awareness of Allah, when engaged in conversation with someone who causes a crack, who says something ignorant, who says something outrageous, we have to learn the process of saying, what am I going to say that covers this gap and there's not going to be a back and forth that makes this crack worse? You have to have, you have to, and you know the people you have an argument with are not people you never met. These are people you've known your whole life. These are friends, family, co-workers that you deal with all the time. You know how they speak. And for many of you, you've had the same exact argument 20, 30, 40 times. Man, every time I go and talk to my mom, this happens. Every time I talk to my dad, we end up like this. Every time I talk to her, this happens. Every time I talk to my friend, this happens. He always says this. Well, if he always says this, and you always respond in the same way, and it always goes the same wrong way, but you don't understand what Sadid means then. Maybe you need to think ahead and say, I've already gone down this road before, and I know where it leads. Maybe I need to be smarter now and say something or not say something. Avoid saying some things or say things in a way that will close this door. That, won't, you know, that will not perpetuate further. And that's something you really have to become thoughtful about. Think about it. Language is, you know, of all the muscles that we have in our body, the eyes and the tongue are actually very easily used. You don't have to actually exercise. You don't get tired of using your eyes. You just open them and they work. Hands can get tired, legs can get tired, your back can get tired, but the tongue can move very quickly. The eyes can move very quickly. So we get trigger happy and we just, whatever comes in our mouth just leaves immediately. An ancient poet once said that he wished that his neck was one mile long. What a strange thing to say, I wish my neck was one mile long. And he was asked, why do you say that? And he said, well, because my gut tells me I should say something. And when those thoughts travel from my gut through my neck, maybe I should have time to think, no, no, put it back down, that shouldn't come out of my mouth. So I'm hoping it's a mile long, you know. So, anadam ala sukut khayrun min anadam ala kalam. Like being, uh, being embarrassed or regretting that you said something is worse. Regretting that you didn't say something is better, you know. So, al qawla sadid, first of all, should I say something? Should I not say something? And what I say, is it going to escalate and make things worse instead of making things better? And with your experience, you already know which kinds of words or phrases or tone or suggestion did not go well. So maybe it's time to experiment with a different direction. Say something other than what you said before. Say something that won't cause damage. Maybe undo damage. I'll give you an example. There was one time, a long time ago, there was a, an elder that I looked up to in a masjid that I shall not name because he'll know, he's watching. So I used to look up to him, very, very nice fellow. And everybody who met him in the masjid was just, to just get soft around him. He just got this very loving personality. And one time we're in the masjid and two of the elders in the masjid had a fight with each other. Arguing, yelling, screaming at the top of their lungs after Maghrib prayer. And the elder that I respect and love, he's also witness to this conversation. And usually what he used to say is, he would come in, he would say, Salam, how are you? How's your family? For every person he met, he would be discourteous. And I was a, one of the regular musallin at that masjid and I noticed that when after that, he would still say Salam to me the same way. But those two other fellows, he would come and just say salam to them, but not more conversation than that. He wouldn't have longer conversation with them. And they felt it. And so one of them, one time we were leaving the masjid, and one of them said, you know, you used to ask me how I'm doing, we used to talk. You don't talk to me like that anymore. And he said, well, I saw you lose your temper. And I felt that, you know, if, if I don't want to be a reason that one day you lose your temper towards me, and then that sin is on you in the house of Allah. And if you lose your temper towards me, and I feel bad towards you, then the angels will record that too, as something against you. So, I care for you, which is why I speak less to you now. That's what he says to him. He doesn't say to him, you know, you're so ignorant. The way you fought that guy, I don't want to talk to you. Why would, I, why would anybody want to talk to you? He actually made it something about his care for him. He doesn't want him to become a worse sinner. He doesn't want him to have a record against him. He doesn't want him to have himself to have a bad feeling towards the person who lost their temper. And that brother who lost his temper, who people were afraid to talk to him because he loses his temper, stood there crying his eyes out. Crying his eyes out. And the next thing he did is he apologized to the one he fought with. And that's what he did. All of that because of just al-qawla sadid, just 
knowing, having the wisdom of what to say and how to say it, how to engage. This is a very powerful, very difficult quality because once again, we are programmed, whatever comes in your head just comes out. Just immediately impulse reaction, right? And this is actually one of the meanings of the word jahala. Aqal in Arabic is to tie up and jahal is to let loose. Whatever comes goes. Okay? This is why وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامَ in Surah Al-Furqan. When the ignorant address them, ignorant doesn't just mean ignorance, it also means impulsive. You had the impulse to say something and you just said it. Stop, think. You know, think. How am I going? Don't just throw grenades with your words. Don't just throw grenades. Have targeted, direct, impactful speech, exact words. And if you can't think of saying something, it's better to stay quiet. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.